Hey guys, I'm Betty. I'm a senior food editor for RealSimple.com. Hi, I'm Ananda, food editor at Real Simple Magazine. And this is Hit or Myth, where we test popular myths in the kitchen. Today's episode is all about appliance hacks. All right. We're gonna make some grilled cheese. So we're gonna lay down a layer of foil. We're gonna wrap up the sandwich in the foil. Okay. The only thing I'm confused about is why, why would anyone feel the need to use a clothing iron to make grilled cheese? I couldn't I tell mean, you. I mean, I did do this when I started abroad in my hotel room. No way. I really wanted a cheese sandwich and I wanted melted cheese sandwich. Okay, so let's wrap this up with our buttery fingers. Perfect. Okay, should we get a timer going? Just sitting here ironing my grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. As we do. As one does. Side one, three minutes. Let's flip it over and do it on the other side for another three minutes. Smells like if you took the scent of an iron with the scent of a sandwich. Married them. Married them. Happily ever after. Okay, that's been about three minutes on each side. Smells like grilled cheese. Smells really good. It's time to unwrap. Oh, oh hi. hi. That is not bad. Look at this guy. Look at that. I mean, we went real deep with that butter. Whoa, yeah, we did. Let's see. I mean, it looks toasted. I mean, it smells like a grilled cheese. It's a pressed grilled cheese. It looks like a grilled cheese. cheese. Okay, let's see. I would say the cheese mm. could be meltier, but it doesn't taste bad. We're just enjoying our grilled cheese over here. Don't mind us. <laughs> I'm into it, it's a yeah. hit. I would say it's a hit. If you have fairly low standards for your grilled cheese, then we'll call it a hit. <laughs> okay, our second experiment today is can you cook bacon in a waffle iron? You might be wondering why, but you know, sometimes you got all your pans running and you don't have a free one. So we just wanted to try it and see what would actually happen. We preheated the waffle iron. All right. My so hands are clean. Two important Ooh, notes hear that on cooking in a waffle iron. First note is that you wanna make sure to put a sheet tray underneath it because if any bacon grease splatters out, you're really gonna regret all of your decisions. <laughs> Second, I would highly recommend a waffle iron that comes with removable plates because I don't know, but I imagine that this is gonna be a nightmare to clean otherwise. Time's up. Okay, seven minutes. Let's do this. See what's up. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, for some reason the left side cooked, cooked a bit more. Definitely. It's a little bit more brown on that side but these will crisp up as a cool. I think the cool thing about cooking in the waffle iron is that it probably creates more crispiness. Yeah, throughout. because you're getting it on both yeah. sides. So this is great if somebody liked more crispy bacon <laughs> and less crispy bacon, everybody's happy. <laughs> you know what else you can do? You put waffle batter in here now. Yeah. Bacon lovers would yeah. love that. Done. This side is nice and crispy. You can hear mm. it. Final word, I would say this is a hit. It's a hit. It's a okay. hit. Let's move on to our third experiment. All right, round three. We're here to see whether or not you can use a high performance blender to not just process foods, but to actually cook and heat them. The idea is basically that if you run it for long enough, the motor and the blade will create friction, which causes effectively your food to cook and heat up. Okay, let's check it out. We've got some chopped onion and a crushed garlic clove that I'm just gonna throw in here. And we've got some whole peeled tomatoes. And we will throw that right in as well. <laughs> and I'm gonna throw in some fresh basil leaves. And about a cup of vegetable broth. So obviously, if this doesn't cook this soup, it's gonna be pretty gross because there are a lot of raw onions in here. So let's process it and see what happens. Go time. Okay, and the idea is that if you do it for enough time, it's gonna heat up. So yep. let's get a timer on for five minutes and uh, we will report back. What's your end stuff? Oh, it's warm! Oh. 
Okay. It's steaming. Okay, so we're just gonna season this with salt and pepper. Give it another whirl just to make sure everything is combined. It smells good. And then we'll give it a try and see. I cannot believe there's steam yeah. coming out. Let's give it One another more whirl. whirl. All right. Let's see. I mean, kind of looks like a Bloody Mary. It does. And it's quite frothy, so maybe you yeah. would want to let it settle. Okay, so that's like a pretty nicely thick tomato soup. I think yeah. we should top it off with some basil. Yeah, maybe a little and yeah. sprinkle drizzle of olive oil. Drizzle of olive oil. Pretty. Give it a taste. Soupy. Like maybe skip the garlic. <laughs> yeah, like. Um, okay, so learnings would be skip the garlic clove because it doesn't mellow out the flavor of the garlic. So I would just roll with a very small yellow onion chopped and do everything else as is. And it's hot, it's hot soup. We're declaring it a hit. We're declaring it's warm this a hit. To hot soup and yeah. uh, it tastes pretty good. It's a hit, it definitely it's, works. Yeah. So to summarize, everything we did today was a hit. Um, kind of fun. You can use a clothing iron to make grilled cheese. You can use a waffle iron to cook bacon. And you can use a high performance blender to blend a soup. Who I knew? would have grilled cheese with this. Let's go get the iron. Okay. <laughs>